It's one of the most crime-ridden cities in the West. Over 3,000 offenses are committed every day. But there's a new sheriff in town, an all-American hero. Mayor Rudy Giuliani and his team of American cops cleared crime off the streets of New York. Can they do the same for Mexico City? It really stresses me out to take the bus home because there could be an assault. I could be robbed of the little I have on me. It's the same every day. Leomar Silva is a 41-year-old social worker. She has two young daughters. It never used to be like this when I was young. We didn't have the feeling we have today in this city. You get on public transport without knowing what will happen. La Roma, Leomar's neighborhood, is riddled with crime. Fantasma and his partner Pinocho are among 250 policemen patrolling this area. <laughs> policemen are seen as dishonest and corrupt, little better than the criminals. The police have had a bad reputation for a long time. They've lost people's trust. Is the bad image unfair? It's not really unfair. There are some policemen who do their job well, and others who don't. At least my partner and I try to do things properly. Always? Well, mostly. And if someone offers you a bribe of a few hundred pesos, would you say no? It depends. It's hardly as if we get $3,000. Here they give you 50 pesos. We really have to stretch our salary to make ends meet. And now we're not supposed to take bribes. We're going to arrest homosexuals. They prostitute themselves on the street. The Mexican police have limited powers. Out of 86,000 cops, less than 4,000 can investigate crime. Fantasma and Pinocho can only make arrests if they see an offense being committed. So how did it go? It's completely pointless. They go in and come straight out again. 
There should be operations, but against proper criminals. But our bosses have ordered this, and we have to obey. La Roma's police force operates from an old dairy. The cops are ill-equipped, their uniforms don't match, and 20% of them don't even turn up for their shift. <laughs> Across the street from the police station is the local park. It's become a haven for prostitutes and drug dealers. Much to the frustration of 27-year-old Arturo Alvarez, who trains dogs and lives nearby. The precinct is just 100 meters from here, and yet muggers aren't stopped. At night there are no lights, and the criminals take advantage of this. When they see a police car, they hide under the bushes. When the police have gone, they come out and hang around waiting for people to mug. Film this. Sex oral in the park. Oral sex in the park. This is what we see every day. People don't believe it. We have to go around filming it. In Leomar's street, there have been 24 break-ins in less than three years. She lives just five minutes from police headquarters. She and her daughters, Annie and little Leomar, feel like prisoners in their own home. My daughters and I hardly ever go out. We mostly stay at home. With a collection of all these videos. In the last few years, we've just been watching videos in order not to go out. It's really affecting me and my daughter's development. I'd love to take them to the park, to the cinema, to tour the city, but I'm scared to go out. It hurts me because this isn't the life I wanted to give my daughters. And Fantasma and Pinocho are not living the life they expected either. Both families share houses with their respective parents. They take home $350 a month, not enough to rent in the cheapest part of town. They even have to buy their own uniform. This costs 700, no, 650 pesos, including the badge. It's a very risky job. But God looks after them. They're in the hands of God. Would you like him to do a different job? Yes. What would you like him to do? Any other job that's less risky. <laughs> Any other job. The police in the US have better training. They're offered guarantees. The government supports them. Over there, if the criminal makes a suspicious move, they shoot him. No problem. Here, they have to shoot you first, and then you can shoot. You're expected to be left half dead before you can shoot back. Para que chispas del recto. 
But now, the chief of police has decided to act. He's turned to the one man he believes can make a difference and end the current crime wave. In eight years as mayor of New York, Rudy Giuliani and his team cut crime by 63%. Now, private investors have given Giuliani $4 million to provide answers for Mexico City. The thing with Giuliani is to look at successful experiences elsewhere. The Mexican police has lived in a ghetto, isolated from the world. Giuliani studied crime statistics to deploy his cops where they were really needed. Serious crime was tackled with a stop and search policy, and he cracked down on beggars, drunks, and graffiti. There are so many kidnappings, muggings. We really hope he'll deliver. It's very urgent. I hope I'll get to see him. There's lots at stake for me personally as well. I'd love to meet him. Whatever the differences uh, in culture and background and, uh, and laws, however, the objective of, for all decent societies is absolutely the same, and that is um, protection and safety for people as a fundamental human right. It makes me laugh to think that they come from other countries. They don't know the system and they try and change it. It's good that they visit and to hear what they think, great, but they'd have to do an in-depth study of policing. Bernard Kerrick, Giuliani's former police commissioner, leads a team of experts who have come to assess training and resources. They took your numbers plus the attorney general's. They have seven months to come up with a set of recommendations to make Mexico City's police force efficient and trustworthy. There's about 50 or 60 men in this room. If one of you becomes corrupt, it affects every one of you. Because the public, they don't look at the name, they think of the uniform. You have to take pride in your job, and not only on duty. By becoming a police officer, your private life now also becomes public. You have to walk a very fine line because you don't want people to think that you're trying to make Mexico City like New York and you're trying to make Mexico like the U.S. That's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to address crime issues. In La Roma, Fantasma is on radio duty. He's brought his own entertainment. Why did you become a policeman? My father was in the police, and the rest of the family were firemen. When I went to the academy, I wanted to become a fireman. But I obviously joined the wrong queue and went to the police instead. I was under the impression I could change over later. I'm still trying, but so far I haven't managed it. In terms of radios, one of the issues that we've heard um, that there's really an issue with a sufficient number of radios for all of your police Nos officers. Does each two-man team have one radio? The ones that are in the cars, yes. The ones that are walking on the street, no. So how do the police officers that are actually on the street communicate mm -hmm. 
if there's a problem or they need ¿Cómo some le pueden assistance? dar parte a aquellos oficiales? Siempre detectan o buscan un lugar donde hay una tienda well, o alguna casa donde hay teléfono para que por medio de una a, llamada nos inmediatamente nos informen. Where they can call us in and let us know what's going on. That could be either a store, a house or whatever where they can find a phone. O sea, con los mismos vecinos se hacen... Maybe with their own neighbors that will lend them their phone. It's sort of like the New York City Police Department back in the 40s and 50s when they had call boxes and had to call in and pay phones. The Mexicans are keen to show that they have a presence on the streets, but the police have all arrived in the same place. The mounted motorcycles, 15, 16, 17, Okay. Well, I got my other five up here having lunch, so. So 22 police officers in a one block area. It's, it's, it's got, I don't know what it is. I, I, it's gotta be supervision. It's also a lack of modern resources. With no fax or email, each of the 70 police precincts must send a pair of officers to headquarters with their crime statistics. Up to three times a day. At least 280 police officers are taken off the beat to do the paper run, which can take up to three hours. Buenos días. Sí, gracias. They spend an enormous amount of time and resources on getting information from the precincts to headquarters on a daily basis. In fact, right now, there is no computer system in any precinct in this city, in Mexico City, that is tied in to headquarters. In fact, up until three months ago, there weren't any computers. Once a week, the chief of police meets with his precinct commanders. Answers to the crime wave seem hard to come by. A ver, Morelos, ¿qué problema tienes ahí? Están regresando mucha gente, ¿o qué? ¿De la cárcel? Han salido mucha gente. Eh, ¿Qué le puedo decir? Uh, chaotic. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't call it chaotic. I'd say they have organizational issues that they have to deal with. They have internal structural issues that they have to deal with. Uh, is there chaos? No. Uh, is there organizational malfunction, so to speak, in some areas? Yes. Fantasma and Pinocchio should be out on patrol, but they've encountered some difficulties. Chronic underfunding means that in La Roma, six out of 37 cars are broken. Officers have to pay for repairs themselves. How do you feel without a car? Like a fish out of water. <laughs> We still get paid the same. It's better to have a car. If anything happens, we can react quickly. We're quite speedy.
It's been five months since the Americans started visiting. Part of Giuliani's campaign of zero tolerance in New York was cracking down on minor offenses and clearing the streets of homeless people. Unlike New York, the Mexican police struggle to get anyone to report crime when it happens. Aquí prevalece mucho el robo de vehículos. Aquí es de robo de autopartes, pero normalmente los ciudadanos queman los vehículos para que ya no les quite nada. Prefieren verlos quemados a que se vean feos, estarles desvalijando la parrilla, las llantas, los vidrios. Y aquí ven los dos vecinos y no, 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 este, nunca reportan nada. Ellos nunca por miedo a represalias. With little faith in the police, Arturo is stepping up his park operations. We're a citizen's response group. We train these guard dogs because the authorities don't do enough to help us. With things as they are, everybody is pinning their hopes on Giuliani. It'll be good when Giuliani comes, to meet him personally and to see what ideas he's got. What do you think Giuliani would say if he saw Roma precinct? That it's a pigsty. He'll just wonder what sort of setup we have. You'll get a bad impression of our facilities. Our base is made of tin. When it rains, we get wet. We're worse off than earthquake victims. The Americans have yet to deliver their recommendations, but the chief of police has come up with his own scheme. To stop his men taking bribes, they'll receive $230 and some extra help for every arrest they make. This is the food parcel we get for our monthly arrests, as part of the efficiency increasing incentives. Does it help you? Yes, they're essentials like rice and beans. When did this start? I think when Giuliani first came to lower the levels of corruption. Are you making more arrests than before? I think so. Before, if you caught someone, they paid you a bribe. You had to take it just to get by. 
Arturo has not noticed any change. In fact, he thinks the park is getting worse. We found a knife hidden in the trunk of a tree. You can just about see it here. He feels he is doing the work the police should be doing. We also noticed these people acting in a suspicious and strange way. We sat down and hid the camera in our clothes. Here they dropped some bullets and put them back in the magazine. They pointed at the tree, about to fire. They looked around to check there was no one watching. Still no sight of Giuliani, and the assessment is overrunning. The Americans have identified poor record keeping as a weakness. There's no curriculum. All they do is they're supposed to come twice a year and be trained and, and do shooting for like 30 minutes. What sort of records do they have to see if people are satisfying? They have computer records, but it's not a database. Like at the New York City Police Department, when we used to say, look it, our shootings are down, complaints against cops are down, all those things that we could say to them, look it, here's the statistics on how we're improving our police conduct. They don't have any of that information to tell their story. So this is part of that loop that we have to close in terms of the recommendations about, look it, you have this requirement, but there's no follow-up to make absolutely. sure that you're complying. There's absolutely no follow-up. Nine months into the Giuliani project, and police HQ is still swamped with a backlog of paperwork. There's been no change so far. Every week, Leomar and Arturo attend La Roma's neighborhood watch meeting. Arturo brings his evidence from the park. O sea, tú tienes que entregármelas, todo tiene un procedimiento. O sea, llegar así y exhibirme unas cosas, pues yo creo que no tiene mejor. Cada, cada delito hay que atacarlo en su instancia. ¿sí? Las personas que estén, por ejemplo, teniendo actos sexuales, como usted dice, que se encuentran condones, que se encuentran X cosas eh, eh, en el parque, ah, bueno, pues eso se va al juzgado cívico. Las personas que tengan con droga, <coughs> arma y todo, se van a la Procuraduría General de la República y así. O sea, hay que atacarlo en su instancia cada uno. Es molesto para mí eh, denunciar a un delincuente y salir a correr un miércoles por la tarde y encontrármelo de frente en el mismo parque. There's been a wave of kidnappings, rapes and murder on public transport. The police are still restricted in their powers of investigation and arrest. There's little they can do. Se trata de we're checking buses, getting the men down and looking for weapons. Just a superficial check. Only men? Unfortunately, we can't check ladies. We'd need a policewoman, and in my precinct, in my unit, we don't have any. Cada vez nos encontramos más muertos en la calle con posesión de droga que estaban distribuyendo muy seguro. Un considerable porcentaje de los despojos de se realizan de con de violencia. Se trasladó una persona de sexo masculino con lesiones de violación. Viajaba en, en un distribuidor de la ruta 104 en la zona de Iztapalapadeza. Mexico City is spinning out of control. Giuliani's final report has not been made. But out of the blue, Chief of Police Ebrard calls a press conference. Okay. 
todas ellas aceptadas por la Secretaría de Seguridad Pública. Las acciones propuestas tienen distintos alcances. He calls for the police to be modernized, a crackdown on corruption, targeting crime hotspots, and crucially, legal reform to support the police. But Giuliani and his team are conspicuously absent. Para la presentación, porque va a estar en otras, en otras cosas. Are you disappointed that Giuliani hasn't come? Yes, I was so impressed and his project is so interesting. I wanted a photograph to remember him by for the rest of my life. I think one of the reasons that the mayor wasn't there or that our staff wasn't there is because we weren't invited. Um, we didn't know that he had released them to the public until after the fact. Um, I think we would have liked to have been there. It would have been easier for us to explain uh, some of the strategies and recommendations, uh, naturally, because we accomplished the findings. Um, but that was his decision, uh, the police commissioner's decision, and, uh, you know, we stand by his decision. They may have fallen out, but the Mexicans have adopted Giuliani's policies. They're cracking down on drink driving in a frenzy of media attention. They may be doing the test, but haven't yet updated the law to hand out punishment. She'll be back behind the wheel as soon as she's sobered up. ¿Y dónde lo pasaron? Pero sería una recomendación o dos, porque las ciento y tantas que hizo, ¿tú crees que las van a pasar? Los medios pueden ser, pero directamente a los Se supone que los que nos interesan son a nosotros. Mira, y por escrito. Pero no están dando ni una copia de los medios. No, nada. No sabemos nada. <laughs> In La Roma, the new anti-graffiti unit is taking note of Leomar's complaints. Bueno, yo lo que me he dado cuenta que es el abandono, el deterioro, la falta de interés de los vecinos por cuidar o rescatar el parque. Aquí se habla de contrabando de drogas, de este, de asaltos, incluso de abuso sexual. Venta de armas. Y da miedo, al menos, al, al menos a mí yo sí le puedo decir, a mí me da miedo traer aquí a mis hijas. Hemos encontrado ah, sí, claro. que sí existe esa relación de, de delincuente y gráfico, ¿no? definitivamente. Y esa es parte de nuestra investigación, es parte de las recomendaciones de Giuliani. En descanso. Ya. Buenas tardes todos. Buenas tardes. En un attempt to improve attendance, Policemen now have to sign a register at the start of their shift. A team of inspectors from police headquarters makes a surprise appearance. Number of 
The Giuliani recommendations stressed that police training should be improved. The plan is to send officers to university, but there are a few hiccups. Es un oficio que mandaron de la secretaría para presentarnos a un curso, pero era era hoy presentarse y hasta ahorita me lo están entregando. De las cuatro de la tarde. Sí. ¿Y a qué hora se tenía que presentar? A las diez y media. Jefe. Fantasma and Pinocho eventually make it to the course. But it's not quite what they expected. Desde qué puntos de vista se puede ver al ser humano? Físico no. ¿Mande? Físico. Físico no. Filosófico y desde el punto de vista psicológico, que son los dos que vimos, y son dos de muchas visiones que se puede ver al ser humano. Y yo les pregunto, desde el punto de vista psicológico, la moralidad, lo correcto. Lo que se debe de hacer está en el ello, verdadero o falso. Es verdadero. Es falso. Es falso. Radica en el super yo. En el super yo es donde se desarrolla la parte de la moral, de lo que debe ser, de lo adecuado, de lo correcto. Otra pregunta, si yo les pregunto, eh, ¿la libertad se define como la autodeterminación axiológica, verdadero o falso? Verdadero, lo acabamos de ver. We're learning new things. It's not very difficult, but not very practical. In La Roma's park, the anti-graffiti squad are putting theory into practice. A raid is underway. This suspect has been found with 50 pesos worth of cannabis. We've increased vigilance, especially regarding drugs, our most common problem. The thing about graffiti is that it attracts young people and it's tied to drugs. That's the problem. Unfortunately, the only person arrested was one of Arturo's park vigilantes. Your camera scared them off. This hole and this bullet were meant for me. Because of my investigation in the park. Arturo was attacked by unknown gunmen. He's decided to leave La Roma. Don't you wish you hadn't investigated in the park? It needed someone who dared to speak out. But there are no results. The park is still the same, and the authorities have the same attitude. They say you must make a complaint, and when you do, nothing happens. One resident was encouraged by the raid. Leomar is taking her daughters to the park for the first time in over two years. The operations will help to get rid of criminals. I just wish they were more frequent. I want to leave. It stinks. It's awful and unkempt. There are broken bottles and it's very empty. That scares me. Someone could grab my bag or steal the girls. There's no safety. I don't feel safe. It's going to take time to get better. New York City crime didn't begin to drop, or a crime did begin to drop, probably within a few months after we created some of these systems. But the perception and the public, they didn't feel the reduced crime for two or three years. 
So I think the secretary has his work cut out for him, um, but I think he'll have success. How long that will take, I think it's up to him, it's up to his staff, and it's up to the system um, to help him. Así es, Daniela. Entonces, Juliani, ¿qué onda? ¿Cómo que no lo ibas a presentar? Es que no vino, Juliani. Ya ves, nomás me dijiste que no lo ibas a presentar, no me lo presentaste. No te lo presenté porque no, no vino. Dijiste que no lo ibas a Ya ves, nunca vino. Vino una vez, en enero. ¿Sí? Y yo, oye, ¿tú sabes cuánto cobró o algo? Eh, sí, bueno, se publicó que cobraron 4,3 millones de dólares y sus gastos. ¿Qué te parece? Me quedo anodada. Millions were found to pay Giuliani, but there's no extra cash for the cops on the street. Yo no gano nada. Yo que gano. Fama mundial. Pinche fama no como. Yo no. No. There is little evidence so far that the Giuliani project has improved morale among Mexico City's underpaid police force. I'm thinking of quitting. What would you like to do? Whatever. I'm thinking of becoming a taxi driver. If my father lends me some money, I'll do that. Things here are very difficult now. I'll see what my father can sort out. But at least one person in the police force is happy. I'm the proud bearer of a beautiful message. Thanks so much, Mr. Giuliani. We hope to see you soon. We miss you with all our heart and would like to thank you personally. A year has passed since Giuliani and his team were hired, and crime in La Roma is rising. Police morale is low. Public confidence that they can do their jobs is even lower. It took eight years in New York for Giuliani to get real results. Mexico City looks to be an even tougher proposition. You can comment on tonight's program by visiting our website at www.bbc.co.uk forward slash correspondent. Next week, the gun trail, how they cross borders and end up on our streets.